So in our previous video, we talked about substance abuse disorder, specifically alcohol abuse, and we went over alcohol abuse completely. In this video, we're going to be discussing alcohol abuse treatment and uh, drugs that you can use to prevent alcohol abuse. Now, if you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, we have a playlist for the USMLE Step 1 psych video, so you can go check it out. And there you can find the alcohol abuse uh, video in its entirety so i highly highly recommend you guys check that video out before continuing this uh video don't forget to like comment and subscribe to our channel when you do and with that being said let's first delve uh, uh deep di into this conversation uh, deep into this topic of the treatments by discussing alcohol abuse so this is going to be a general overview of the previous video like i said so alcohol is a seen as depressant and uh, alcohol abuse itself is going to be defined by someone having a physiologic tolerance and dependence on alcohol and without that alcohol they're gonna have withdrawal symptoms that are going to be present so the tolerance dependence right so the tolerance dependence sorry and the withdrawal symptoms are the key uh, defining factors of alcohol abuse alcohol damages uh, zone 3 of the liver around the central vein and uh, the biomarkers in alcohol abuse are definitely going to be increased. So the first biomarker is going to be ALT. ALT, uh, uh, sorry, it's going to be AST. AST is going to be higher than ALT. And the way I like to remember it, for, in my opinion, was that I think about alcohol and then I put ALT first. Uh, and then I put ALT is less than AST. So that means AST is going to be higher by a ratio of uh, 1 to 2. AS, AST is going to be 2 times the amount of ALT. But this normally is going to return back in 7 days. So it's going to be back to normal within 7 days. So what's a longitudinal way of checking for alcohol abuse? Use, well, that's going to be serum GGT, serum gamma glutamyl transferase. This is going to be a measurement for liver damage that is used in a long term fashion because normally uh, it returns back to normal in two to six weeks. So after one week, you want to measure serum GGT instead of AST and ALT. Now the complications of alcohol abuse include cirrhosis and hepatitis, pancreatitis, uh, Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, which we covered briefly in the previous video and intensively in its own video, which you can find on the playlist, as well as peripheral neuropathy and uh, testicular atrophy. And it can manifest, alcohol abuse can manifest as uh, alcohol poisoning, withdrawal, seizures, as well as as hallucinosis and the feared manifestation the most dangerous manifestation of alcohol abuse is delirium tremens now we have talked about uh, detailed ways of preventing delirium tremens in the previous video by using supportive care benzodiazepines uh, phenobarbital and pro uh, uh, propofol uh, but in this video we're going to be talking about preventing alcohol abuse in general right uh, what are some longitudinal ways other than and cognitive behavioral therapy. So uh, with that being said, let's talk about the treatments for alcohol abuse. Now there are several treatments, but mainly we have non-medical and medical treatments. So non-medical treatments is going to be support groups, uh, mainly Alcoholics Anonymous. They're very good at what they do. They're very good at making sure a patient feels comfortable uh, and uh, getting a patient ready to go through the steps of uh, addressing their abuse and their addictive issues and how to go uh, how to treat it uh, in in non-medical fashion so alcohol and alcoholics anonymous is very important you may get a step question about that like what is the best way of treating long-term alcohol abuse it's going to be uh, a medical treatment combined with non-medical support groups like alcoholics anonymous now when it comes to medical treatment there are three main drugs that are fda approved that you need to know about that the first one is disulfiram also known as antabuse. Uh, the second one is naltrexone, and the third one is acamprostate. 
Now we're going to be talking about all three of these drugs uh, in general, and we're going to talk about combined medical therapy that you can use for alcohol abuse. You definitely need to know these three drugs uh, and how they are used when it comes to alcohol abuse. So let's start with the very first one, disulfiram. Disulfiram is a, uh, a very commonly used drug to treat alcohol abuse simply because it inhibits aldehyde dehydrogenase. This is what disulfiram is blocking. And because you are inhibiting aldehyde dehydrogenase, you're going to have a buildup of acetaldehyde. Okay, and acetaldehyde it what is what gives you all of the negative effects of alcohol. So all of the hangover effects. It's going to trigger a catecholamine response. That's what's happening when you have a hangover. Uh, acetaldehyde is triggering is triggering a catecholamine response. So you're going to have sweating, flushing, palpitations, nausea, vomiting, headaches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And what it does, it's going to make it feel like someone is having the worst hangover ever, ever. So that's what uh, disulfiram is. That's how it's used. It simply uh, inhibits acetaldehyde uh, and uh, causes, sorry, acid, uh, aldehyde dehydrogenase. And it inhibits aldehyde dehydrogenase. And then it causes a buildup of acetaldehyde, which leads to a super bad hangover. So that is the main way uh, of preventing alcohol abuse with disulfiram. Now the second drug that we're talking about was naltrexone. Naltrexone is a long acting opioid antagonist. Mainly, it is a mu receptor antagonist. Uh, now, the mechanism for this is not, is not fully understood, but what we do know is it may help reduce uh, relapse to heavy drinking, and it's reported to reduce the positive reinforcing, aka the pleasurable effects of alcohol and suppressing its cravings by uh, uh, acting as a receptor antagonist. Okay, so that is what naltrexone is. And then finally, we have a, uh, a camprostate. A camprostate is uh, a drug where we don't really know the full mechanism of action. Where it might, uh, we might be thinking it modulates the glutamin, glutam, glutaminergic uh, neurotransmission through ND, NMDA. Wow, this is a, a mouthful. But pretty much what we think is um, it may activate the glutamate and GABA imbalance associated with chronic alcohol abuse. It may restore that chronic uh, uh, imbalance of GABA and glutamate. Okay, so what uh, what it's thought is that a camprostrate is used to reduce the negative reinforcement. Now there is mixed results in supporting the efficacy, and uh, there are very common GI side effects that can occur. But the main thing you need to know about a camprostate is that there is a rare but very serious side effect uh, that can happen, which can include suicidal thoughts and ideation. Patients who take this drug may have a higher risk for suicide. So that's definitely something you should know. Now when it comes to treating someone who has alcohol abuse along with the non-medical uh, treatments like the support groups of Alcoholics Anonymous, etc., etc., you may want to use combination medical treatment uh, to treat the positive and negative effects. So combined treatment sometimes is very helpful for specific patients. And when it comes to it, uh, we're going to be combining naltrexone and a camprostate. Now the reason why is because they both have different mechanisms of action. That's a very important thing to understand. And uh, both of them are going to target different aspects of alcohol dependence. So naltrexone affects the positive reinforcement, right? The, the pleasurable effects of drinking alcohol makes you uh, drunk, etc., etc. Now that's what naltrexone is theoretically uh, seen to reduce. It reduces the risk of heavy drinking if a relapse occurs from disulfiram. A camper state reduces the negative reinforcement, right? Theoretically, it decreases the conditioned craving and distress following you know, cessation. It, re it decreases your withdrawal symptoms. Now, if you combine these two together, you're going to have a, a, a dual effect on 
the the patient's ability to uh, fall off the wagon. Now you can also give disulfiram. Keep in mind, disulfiram is more so given uh, in order to add a uh, a punishment of sorts, right? That's that's a positive punishment. You're adding a punishment, and that punishment is going to be a patient feeling like they have the worst hangover ever. Just a little bit of classic and you know, a, a classic conditioning for you. So if you guys don't remember that from the previous videos that we talked about. Now with that being said, I hope this clarified what you can use to treat alcohol abuse in general. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And if you guys don't know, well, you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Madden Medicine and we'll pop up wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Thank you again and go ahead and continue on to the next topic.